How are you doing, Walt? I'm great. Nice to meet you, Stefan. Yeah, you too. I mean, for the best part of a decade, I guess, trolls have become such a huge part of your life. A whole franchise in the world and characters that by now they must mean so much to you. <laughs> they really do. I mean, they are living, breathing people <laughs> to me. You know, we've gone so far into their psyche and just... I probably spend more time in Trolls World than I do anywhere else. And I just love it. It's such a great playground for creativity that it's, I feel very grateful to be in this world. I'm point, I, this is just an assumption, but I just have this picture of your house just being wall to wall of like troll stuff. Is that, is that, <laughs> you, you, you keep little bits of like souvenirs and mementos of little characters and figurines and stuff? Yeah, definitely. I am in a hotel right now, but if we were in my office, it is packed to the gills of not only trolls things but just inspirations through the decades you know i've been making movies for 30 years now yeah and uh <laughs> i surround my stuff with inspir my i surround myself with inspiration so does the whole project become more kind of collaborative as you go on because i guess by now in the third film the likes of justin and Anna, i mean everyone knows their roles understand their characters so well now does it get to a point to some degree where you can kind of just say to people you know what you're doing here and just kind of let lead them to their own devices definitely that's and that's always been my philosophy but as we get further into the series and get to know the characters a little bit better they like for Justin and Anna, they bring a lot. I mean, all the cast does, but they really bring a lot to this. And I always just kind of stand out of the way. But I'm in there in the room with them. We're reading the lines together. I play the other characters with them. And there's lots of improvisation, lots of kind of, like, let's stop and talk about the characters and what would they do there and how how would they deliver this line? So there, it's an incl incredible collaborative process, not only with the cast, but the entire crew. Well, I'm interested about improv in an animation. So if they were to kind of improv a scene, does that mean you have to then go back to the illustrators and say, guys, we're going to have to sort of draw another bit or an extra sort of bit of dialogue here? And go, well, what's the kind of process like in that regard? Yeah, it's a good question. And, and it's a little bit of both, but mostly, you know, we're writing and trying things and putting just rough sketches up and doing the voices ourselves, seeing how the movie plays. Once we get to a certain point, we go, let's bring in the actors. And it's still rough sketches. So we don't do any animation until we record the voices. So any kind of improvisation or attitude really inspires the animators down the line. But there's been cases where like, you know what, let's let's fix this here. Or Justin might have an idea for a joke. Let's go back and rearrange it. Mm -hmm. I wanted to talk about the casting of Brozone, which is, I mean, you've got some incredible names. I just wanted to know about the kind of process there in, in, in picking some of the such brilliant, I mean, Kid Cudi, David Diggs, I mean, it's an incredible array of, of voices you, you guys managed to get for this. I, it was really great. I, you know, we got to build our own uh, super boy band <laughs> who we wanted in there. Uh, you know, and that too is a, a process. First, we try to find out just ourselves with the writers and the character designers. Who are these characters? You know, who are they? Once we kind of have a rough idea of who they are, that that helps kind of narrow down the casting process. You know, like talk about John Dory, Branch's older brother. You know, he had a certain attitude. He's based on my older brother a little bit, whether he was larger than life and he doesn't adhere to social norms. And so we start doing that. We go, oh, you know, who kind of captures that is Eric Andre, who I always wanted to work with. He's incredibly funny and dangerous and very talented. So we call him up and say, hey, would you like to be in this? And almost everybody we reached out to, all the guys, Dovey Diggs, Troy Savon, Kid Cuddy, who we wanted to work with for a while, they were all really into it right from the the word go i think we had garnered a lot of new fans with uh trolls world tour you know the, that movie really connected with a lot of people so this time around it was like we had an idea people were into it i mean eric andre is an incredible person to get on board did he did he behave himself i just imagine him turning <laughs> things around because he's was so very kind of rock and roll that guy <laughs> He definitely was. And I was concerned about that stuff. <laughs> I go, is this, am I just going to be on his show? Am I some prank for him? And he was so professional, so kind and loving, but 
absolutely wild in the room you know he loved doing what we call efforts like just making noises like okay here you're falling from the ceiling and you land on the desk you know <laughs> it's like any kind of any kind of wild effort he was incredibly into but when we need to kind of calm it down and be really authentically emotional he was able to do that i just love that guy at one point i was like i don't want to ever do a movie without him in it Another another incredible uh, sort of coup, I suppose you could say for the for the for the film is to get NSYNC on board. I mean, how, how did that? How, did you did you go to NSYNC and say, look, we need a song, obviously with a Justin uh, connection, and, and say, look, would you guys be up for kind of uh, doing that? Or did they come to you and say, look, we want to write new material? Would this this could be a good place to host it? How did that whole thing kind of come about? It was wild. It was definitely a gift to the movie, and I think to the world really seems to be embracing it. It all came from Justin. Mm -hmm. You know, we had this idea about family bands and then we started to get in more into about boy bands and that aesthetic and that tone and kind of working with Justin and his experience with that. And as we started building the cover songs, a lot of those old songs started to come in. So at one day, <laughs> Justin came to us, he texted our, our producer, Gina Shea, and he says, what if I got the guys back together? <laughs> and uh, and we all had a momentary uh, heart attack because we were very excited. And it just felt so natural to the evolution of this film. And it just it worked out so lovely. So it was, it was all Justin's thing. I mean, I'm not going to lie that when with Justin and his obviously his boy band background, yeah. it felt it felt like a beautiful, it felt inevitable, despite the fact it felt surprising at the same time, if that makes any sense. <laughs> but, it does. It's but um, I was going to say, when you reach the third film in a franchise, what's the challenge like in ensuring that it remains true to what came before? So it captures the kind of same essence and tonality of the previous movies, but also it feels original and unique of its own right. Yeah, that's a good question. And that's really one of the things we try for. Like, it, like you said, it obviously has to have a cohesion with the rest of the films, but we're always strive to have its own identity. Sometimes that means bringing in some new collaborators, collaborators we haven't worked with before. But I've always loved those sequels that had their own identity. You know, the Alfonso Cuaron, uh, Harry Potter kind of captures that spirit. And so that history of sequels kind of drives us. You know, how, how does this have its own unique visual flair? How do we have new characters we haven't seen before? And what's great is the challenge, the creative challenge of how can we push ourselves? That just, the crew loves that. I love that as a challenge. And I really think we found it. I think we found a, a unique take on our troll universe i was wondering actually about the these kind of narrative ideas are they things that you've had with you for some time like let's say branch having brothers is that something you sit down and brainstorm and coming up with ideas for a third movie or do some of these ideas actually come from years gone by and they're things that you always plan to one day kind of fully realize yeah this good question too this one in particular the seed of the idea was from our producer, Gina Shea, back on Trolls 1. You know, we started talking about Branch. We started talking about ourselves, even as adults. And we have these, this way of being, of who we are. And how did it get that way? So we, we tapped into it with Branch's grandma and Trolls 1, but we felt there was so much more there. And Gina was pitching this kind of family tree. And we're always talking about it. By the time it came to, yes, we get to make another one, we said, let's do this idea. Branch's family tree, that there's brothers that we didn't know about. And of course, naturally, organically, oh, what if they were in a band together? And it was a boy band. And I love that genre of let's get the band back together, like the Blues Brothers. Like that's a good engine. So it all just kind of comes together organically. But we're talking about stories years ago. And even now we're talking about where can we go with it? Yeah, well, that leads into a very inevitable question I was always going to ask today. But are there are there more ideas for more Trolls movies? Yeah. Are you still coming up with ideas and stories and concepts and stuff? Definitely. We've got a whole slew of places we want to go. New characters, new worlds. You know, at this point, it just is <laughs> up to the world. You know, do they want another one? We are ready to go. We've got some pretty exciting ideas. We just haven't really totally nailed one yet. We want to see which characters people connect with and... Yeah, we're we're excited. There is an infinite possibilities with the troll films. So my, my final question though, because I was going to ask about your just yourself as a kind of as a as a filmmaker. I mean, were you did you always want to animate? And it's not just because you grew up with the name Walt D, uh, which obviously is <laughs> destiny, but were you were you one yeah. of those at the back of the class always scribbling and coming up with stories? Uh, absolutely 100 percent And also Walt Disney and I share the same birthday, December 5th. 
So <laughs> that's wild. Yeah, it was destiny. I mean, as early as I can remember, like probably in fourth grade, I was definitely like, oh, people make these movies. And I especially loved animation. I'd go see those old Disney films at a, a revival theater. I wanted to do this my whole life. So I'm extremely grateful that it actually worked out, you know, with some hard work and some <laughs> real intention. You know, I was one of the lucky ones. So just to quickly, before I do before I go, I just wanted to check. Were you named after Walt Disney? Is that where the Walt? I, I wasn't, which is wild and bizarre, especially the birthdays. My dad was Walt. His dad was Walt. So I, <laughs> it's a, a long tradition of Walt's. Yeah. Well, I think I don't usually believe in destiny, but in this instance, it feels quite, it feels like it, it had to be, it had to be. I have to say. Have to say. <laughs> Thank you so much uh, for your time today, Walt, and hopefully we'll catch up in the future about Trolls 4, who knows? Yeah, thanks, Stefan, good to meet you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey, hey you guys! <laughs> hey you guys! <laughs> Hey, that's what they all say. Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys!